Hey guys, it is Julie here with JT Wealth. In today's video, I want to address some of the buzz occurring around the finance niche here on YouTube, plus show you guys my track record with some of my stock picks. So let's get into it. All right guys, welcome back and thank you so much for being here. Like I said, today's video is a little bit different as I'm going to address some of the buzz occurring around finance YouTube channels lately, but also give you guys a glimpse at my stock pick track record for some stocks over the last couple of months. So I basically want to share my philosophy for my YouTube channel and give you some insight as to how I make these selections of stocks that I decide to share with you guys. The first thing that I want to address is sponsored videos. Now, personally, I made a rule for myself when I began this channel that I would never do a sponsored video for a specific stock. I am open to sponsored videos for platforms or websites that I use in trust or different products, but personally, I just didn't think I could be unbiased if I had been paid to review a certain company. With that being said, I am in no way attacking the integrity of anybody who does choose to do sponsored videos. This was just a personal choice that I decided to make for my channel. The second topic I want to address is there's a lot of chatter surrounding pump and dump schemes with penny stocks especially. So there's a few points I want to address with this. First of all, when I am sourcing different penny stocks, I always try to avoid ones that are already being hyped up by a lot of people. I specifically look for very solid companies that have potential growth over the future. I often look for stocks that have strong analyst ratings, as I think it's a really good sign if there are professionals that are familiar with those specific markets that have high hopes for those stocks, and if those analysts have high ratings themselves, I think that carries a lot more weight than just giving my own opinion. And with those analyst ratings, we are looking at their price targets over the next year, and I always try to emphasize that those price targets are over the next 12 months. Now, I don't give specific buy and sell prices myself as I don't want people just mimicking my trades. And further to that point, I'm not really an active trader. I am a longer term investor. So if I do take a position in any of these stocks, which I don't on a lot since I cover a good bit, but if I do, they are being held for years to come. So I'm certainly not selling out after any initial hype in the first few days. Now these analysts base their price targets on catalysts that they expect to happen over that next one year period. So those catalysts might not pop up for months to come after my videos. And analysts are certainly not expecting YouTube videos to be one of those catalysts that sustains a stock's long-term growth. With all of the excitement and hype around penny stocks lately, I do try to limit my videos to one per week and only when I've come across a company I truly believe in. Beyond that, I really make an effort to bring a wide diversified portfolio together for you guys with blue chip, dividend, and other types of growth stocks. Now, obviously volatility is just the nature of the stock market and stocks are always gonna fluctuate up and down, especially with some of these lower cap companies. So on that note, I always try to stress that you need to have a strong investment plan. Understand if you are looking for a quick trade or if you're a long-term holder. And if you are a long-term investor, does your risk tolerance allow you to ride out all of that volatility? Make sure that you're always choosing stocks that you are comfortable with both the rise and the fall, and don't just blindly follow what everybody else is jumping into. Now, with all of that being said, I wanted to take a chance and go back and recap some of the previous stocks that I had picked between mid-November up until December. This is when I started introducing more penny stocks or stocks to buy at rock bottom prices. So we are gonna go through rapid fire because there's about 19 stocks that we are covering and just see what price we mentioned them at, what price they are at today, and what their chart has done in between that time period. Now, I am happy to report that out of the 19 stocks I covered, only three are currently at a negative return, and the worst return is just at negative 7.5%. Just before we jump into all of those, this is your friendly reminder to show your support by hitting that thumbs up button, leave your thoughts in the comments down below, and don't forget to check out that description section with some awesome referral links. Okay, rapid fire stock time. First up, we are looking at stocks that we discussed on November 13th, starting with Sequence Communications under the ticker SQNS. 
Now, when we mentioned them on November 13th, their current stock price was $4.40 per share. After that, we saw a decent spike up, followed by a bit of a decline, but a steady climb since. And as of today, that stock is now up over 80%. Next is ReproMed Systems, who trades under the ticker KRMD. On the 13th, they were trading at $4 per share, and since then have had a steady climb with a bit of a decline over January, and are currently up 27.75%. We have Optinos, which trades under the ticker OPTN. It was at about $4.46 on November 17th, and has had some ups and downs since then, and is currently down about 7.5%. So as I mentioned before, that is the one that is the worst performer out of our bunch. We also had Go Health under the ticker GOCO, who is trading at $11.35 per share on the 17th and dipped actually a bit after our video, but has now climbed back up and is up 34% to date. We also had ADT trading under the ticker ADT, who was at $7.63 per share and has now climbed up about 17.5%. Then on the 20th, we have Longview Acquisitions. Now this is the company that is merging with the Butterfly Network, which is that medical ultrasound device. So they were at $12.50 per share when we first discussed them, and they have now climbed up just shy of 77%. We have Co-Crystal Pharma on November 24th, who trades under the ticker COCP. They were at $1.30 when we first mentioned them and had taken a good jump up already. Now, after that video, they did spike up, followed by a correction, but now later in January, we've seen another jump up and the stock is now up 62% to date. We have Diamedica Therapeutics trading under the ticker DMAC. They were at $5.22 per share when we first discussed them, and they have now seen a rise up about 67%. Next, we have one that has done incredibly well lately, and that is Jevo. Trading under the ticker GEVO, we first discussed these guys on November 24th when they were at $2.10 per share. They are now up over $10 for nearly a 400% increase. Next, we have Platinum Group Metals Limited under the ticker PLG. They were at $2.27 per share and are now up over $4 for about an 85% increase. Then on November 27th, we have Vroom. Now this was not a penny stock, but one that we mentioned about buying near rock bottom. They were at $37.43 per share and these guys are now down just slightly at 2%. We also have Kodiak Biosciences under the ticker CDAK. They were at $9.61 when we mentioned them on November 27th and have since seen some nice growth and are up nearly 180%. Arcutus Biotherapeutics under the ticker ARQT. They were at $25.94 and have since grown about 3.5%. We then have G1 Therapeutics under the ticker GTHX. They were at $18.26 per share, and they are now up just shy of 14%. Moving to the very beginning of December, we have Selectar Biosciences. They trade under the ticker CLRB. They were at $1.52 on the December 1st, and are now up about 30%. Applied Genetic Technologies Corp, or AGTC, they were at $4.82 on December 1st. And this is another one with a small decline as they're down about 3%. Then moving to December 3rd, we have Synodyme. They trade under the ticker CIDM. They were at about 56 cents per share on December 3rd. They have seen a lot of growth lately and are now up about 142%. We also have Cubient under the ticker KBNT. They were at $4.88 when we discussed them on December 3rd, and they took a nice jump up after that with some correction afterwards, but overall are still up 12%. And then we have Orion Group Holdings under the ticker ORN. They were at $4.42 per share and have seen some steady growth and are now up about 30%. Now I am sharing those stock picks from mid-November to December instead of ones that we've just covered these last couple of weeks because they've actually had time to see some more stable and sustainable growth. Now most of those companies haven't even had some of the big catalysts that analysts expected for their big price increases, but it just shows that after that initial hype down, dies down, there is still room for some steady growth. 
Of course, with any of those stocks, there have been ups and downs within that time period. And this is why I say you need to have a plan and understand your time frame for your investment and what kind of waves you're willing to ride out. Like I said, when I am sharing stocks, I'm typically looking with a longer lens on time frame, so one plus years. And a lot can happen within that time, which is why it's really important to do your own research and due diligence, understand the companies that you're investing in and what your targets for that investment are. So hopefully that addresses some concerns and questions that people have had and gives you some insight as far as my philosophy and where I'm coming at with this channel. Now you guys know I always love hearing from you, so please be sure to leave your thoughts and comments down below. If you made it all the way to the end of the video here, make sure you hit that thumbs up and that you're subscribed as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic weekend and cheers.